Hey guys, today I wanted to try out something new as a side thing to go along with my game reviews. Welcome to Nick on Aquamagnus LEGO Rewind. Despite whatever impressions including Aquamagna my username might give people, Bionicle is not the only LEGO theme I like, and I felt like showing my appreciation for a few of LEGO's many other themes, the ones that have really clicked with me. Some of these will be themes I collected, while others will be before my time that I later discovered and want to introduce the next generation to. In this episode, we'll be looking at a LEGO Space sub-theme, and it won't be the only time we go that way. Ice Planet 2002 was introduced in 1993, with most of its sets releasing that year. This sub-theme focused on a team of researchers on the planet Crystal, using rockets to conduct top-secret research on the hostile world, launching satellites to collect readings and data on the planet and such. The sets were a fairly even mix of ground vehicles and air vehicles, if not space-worthy ones. Magnets were used to load and unload satellites and probes into position for pretend launching, and they usually include elements like skis, chainsaws, and other basic gear for the minifigs appropriate for the setting. The theme only included eight sets, but was treated as one small part of a wider universe, fitting in with other space sub-themes released around the time. It was created as a loose continuation of the Emtron line released in 1990, which similarly focused on civilians who only resorted to violence when under siege by the current generation of 1991's Blacktron sets, which was itself something of a follow-up to the old Blacktron from 1987. So in the midst of all these other LEGO Space sub-themes, what makes Ice Planet special? Emtron was the first theme to introduce Magnus used to lift cargo and link things together, so Ice Planet can't exactly take credit for that. Alright, well what else is there? Up until around this time, all of the Space sub-themes shared something in common. The minifigures. They all had that same smile, even the bad guys. Ice Planet's minifigures were pretty bold for the time. The faces were given a lot more detail and individuality than any before, putting previous attempts like 1992 Space Police 2 to shame, and it even included the first women featured in a LEGO Space sub-theme. So this was a giant leap in the evolution of fleshing out minifigures, bringing them closer to the incredible level of detail and personality we see today. Ice Planet may not have been the first to do some of these things, but it did them better and expand on them in big ways. The sets had an amazing aesthetic for the time and a vivid color palette, and the builds had a simple but satisfying charm to them such as the beautifully named Celestial Sled and the blunt yet eloquent Blizzard Baron. The inclusion of magnets and the simple uniform look of the sets encouraged kids to play with them together, using the largest two sets as a base upon which to build and add to with elements of the other sets. Nothing really stuck out like a sore thumb or felt out of place. This consistency is a strong point of many LEGO Space sub-themes, which also tend to focus on two or three colors and a unified aesthetic, but I think this may be one of the clearest examples of it. At a time when LEGO started to go a little crazy with giant specialized pieces straying further and further away from the just bricks that many would have you believe LEGO was all about in those days, Ice Planet was slightly more grounded, not as flashy or extravagant as its neighboring themes, but still standing out with the whole working man feel. The characters of the theme did not have it easy, harassed on all sides by the likes of Blacktron, Spireus, and supposedly even some rogue factions of the Space Police, basically every other space theme that was available at the time. And yet it's endured in the memories of builders longer than any of those sub-themes, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. So I'd say it went out in the end. It's a classic underdog story. Even as a theme was being phased out and other sub-themes like Unitron were introduced, Ice Planet left its mark, appearing in LEGO Racers and seeing one of its smaller sets re-released in some parts of the world as late as 1999. That's just as early construction themes were being introduced. Wouldn't it be something if the theme somehow actually survived until 2002? And if you want to see how relevant this theme is today, just do a quick Google search and you'll be stunned by the sheer amount of mocks inspired by this theme that people continue to make to this day. See, this is why I felt this one fledgling theme was worth dedicating an entire episode to. Large or small, geometric or sleek, these mocks are a thing of beauty and you could spend like an hour just scrolling through these and taking the time to admire them. I think the most impressive Ice Planet mock ever built is this one. It might look like a base of operations from outside, but it's actually intended to be a simple apartment complex. The interior is pretty believable, with a lot of homely touches that make it just cozy and realistic enough to be welcoming. If people actually had to survive on an ice planet in the future, this is how they do it. In this apartment, we see this researcher having a secret affair with a member of Blacktron. This just adds another layer of complexity and realness to an already surprisingly grounded space theme. It doesn't even end with these mocks. Just look at this behemoth somebody made on their computer! Those wheels are gigantic! If you ever bought the Thornatus back in the day like I did, or any set featuring these giant wheels, this should give you a sense of how massive this thing would be if it were ever constructed in real life. That I'd like to see. It even has room for actual ice plant sets to hitch a ride inside. The themes also inspired some great art you can find on sites like DA. One of the things that's helped Ice Planet endure in the hearts and minds of LEGO fans for so long is how basic it is. All you really need is enough white, blue, and trans-orange pieces and you can make your own Ice Planet creations that'll fit right in. 
and there is no shortage of elements with those colors in modern LEGO sets. Something like Life on Mars is a lot more... specific, not as uniform. The more out there colors introduced at the time haven't been used much since then or have even been retired, and the printings and more specialized elements make it a lot harder to just whip up something that fits into the theme's aesthetic, and it is a great aesthetic. But Ice Planet has a great aesthetic that's much simpler and easier to replicate, so I'd say that plainness as a strength is given a more sticking power. What these mockists are doing with the pieces they have inspired by this theme, it really goes back to that saying they use in some of the oldest commercials. A new toy every day. That may actually be the case here. I was born in 1991, so Ice Planet passed me by as I was just too young for it. But as I look back on it, it's a darn cool theme that I wish could be revisited in a similar fashion to how LEGO's revisited some of their other 90s themes and their more contemporary city lines. That's one thing that's always bugged me a bit, is how little love space gets from LEGO these days, at least in this form. Sure, we get plenty of space ships in the form of Star Wars sets which are generally of good quality, but classic LEGO space began as a companion of sorts alongside the LEGO town theme. Those were LEGO's two big themes of the time, and the space sets were basically just that, town sets with a space theme. The theme isn't gone by any stretch, there is a bit of crossover with the occasional city set that includes a rocket ship or something, but these are a little too contemporary to be interesting to me. Outside of that, LEGO space has been revisited in many forms in more recent years, but the shift in focus from civilian life to pure combat in sub-themes like Mars Mission, Galaxy Squad, and the aptly named Alien Conquest makes these sub-themes feel pretty repetitive to me. I don't even need to describe that last one for you to get the picture, just look at it. A lot has changed in these 39 years, but some things stay the same. They even released a Space Police 3, which was pretty stellar in its own right, I will say. It isn't hard to imagine how Ice Planet could work today. To a degree, fans have done it in a way that works for years, and it doesn't look like they're ever going to stop. Life on Mars was followed by Mars Mission, Rock Raiders was followed by Power Miners. I don't think something more chill, another civilian life in space theme will ever be completely out of the question. We just have to make it profitable for LEGO. In the next episode of LEGO Rewind, I'll share my thoughts on Life on Mars, another really cool inspired theme, which I was actually able to get some sets of back in the day. Please share this video and consider checking out my books. I'm hoping these shorter videos will be more accessible, as watch time is more important than views nowadays, and the more people watch this all the way through, the more it'll get recommended, and the more it'll help me out. Anyway, thanks for watching. Go for that super satellite! Black drum attack! Lower the rocket! Save the satellite! when you discover the new ice planet from Lego System. The ice planet was in a deep freeze until a maniac touched down. Lego maniac! <laughs> Lego System, Ice Planet, and Space Police. Each set sold separately. Maniac not included.